everyone. The form we're going to be using requires at least two nouns. So you take a noun and you attach iranen, and then you attach the other noun. Now this e is only added if noun ends with a consonant. So what does it mean? This form originally comes from a quoting form, which is irago mal hanen. Now I wrote mal hanen. It's actually never said. It's just hanen, but that's what it would be. This is the straightforward quoting form when you're just quoting something directly. You're not quoting a question or a command. You're just saying something with the verb ida to be. So you're saying that something noun is, and then the nun at the end here changes this into an adjective, which means it can describe another noun. So this form iranen is actually the same thing as saying ira gohanen. Ira gohanen. So literally, a noun that is called noun A. What are they saying noun B is? Well, it's noun A. Or you could also think of it as like titled or named if it's a person. The most common though I'd say are called, named, and titled. 저는 빌리라고 해요. Just for example. So literally, this is the 이라고 form, right? So to say 이다, something is. As for me, I say I am Ida, I am Billy. I call myself Billy. My name's Billy. I call myself Billy. I just want to show you one more use of it. But there's another common way that this form can shorten. Iran. A Iran B. It's the shortened version of Iranin, which is the shortened version of Iraguhanin, which is the short. No, I'm just kidding. It doesn't really go further than that. It's shortening all the way down. So let's do our first example. Okay, everyone should know these two words already. Kimchi and umshik. Kimchi meaning kimchi. Umshik meaning umshik. No, I'm just kidding. Umshik meaning food. So food that is called, that is titled, that is named kimchi. Food called kimchi. This isn't a sentence. It's just a fragment, just to show you. So how could you use this in a sentence? When would you ever want to say a food called kimchi? Never. But you would put this in a sentence. You could ask someone though, do you know a food called kimchi? Do you know about the food called kimchi? Have you tried this food called kimchi before? When would you ever ask someone, kimchi raanen umshigeul mogobasseoyo? Have you ever tried a food called kimchi? What situation would you ever do that? Why don't you just say, have you, have you ever tried kimchi before? Why wouldn't you just say, do you know kimchi? So when would you use it? This form is used when you are trying to explain something or clarify something that you think the listener might not know about. You're not going to say, have you seen that little underrated gem movie? It's no one knows about it, but it's kind of an indie movie known as Star Wars. You would just say, do you know Star Wars? Did you see Star Wars, right? But you could say something like, hey, have you ever seen that movie called American Graffiti? Most people wouldn't know George Lucas's other earlier movies, right? You would never say something like kimchi raanen umshik unless you thought the listener doesn't know what it is. I would just say kimchi. But if we were to replace this, let's say there's a food called brek. <laughs> there's not, but you don't know it. So I could say, oh, hoksi brek. <laughs> Do you know the food? Then it sounds more natural than just saying because they're going to be like, what is but you've said it's a food. So like, hey, there's this food and it's called do you know that? That is when you use this form. The reason I'm telling you this is because I don't want you to just stick this form on every time you're trying to say something like, oh, I need to put the noun here. It's a movie. So I need to put movie. It's a show. I need to put show. It's a food. Oh, it's a it's a a dining room set. It's a Lego character. Like, you don't need to do that if the person you're talking to already knows what you're talking about. You don't have to know that they don't know. You think there's maybe a possibility they don't know what I'm talking about. So yes, keep that in mind. One more thing. Since I said this form comes from the quoting form, it might help you if you imagine floating quotation marks around whatever it is that you're calling something. A food called? Kimchi, kind of imagine in your mind that there are quotation marks around whatever item that you're using with the iranen form. So it's not just a food called kimchi. You can also think of it like this. Have you ever tried kimchi before? When you put it in quotes, you're kind of like setting it off to the side and saying, hey, look at this. I'm putting it in quotes because you might not know what it is. Let's go into our first example sentence. Ojingo game. I don't have to tell you what that is, or maybe I do. Squid game. 
Iran in drama. So a drama that is called or that is titled or that is named. So a drama that is called Ozingo Game. Have you ever heard of the drama Squid Game? Have you ever heard of the drama Squid Game? I haven't seen it, but I've heard of it. Have you heard about the drama called Squid Game? Or have you heard about the drama Squid Game? Ozingo Game Iranin drama Turobonjok is soil. Aka Tersuranin Saramanteso Tonaga was soil. Tersuranin Saram. I think a person named Tersu would work. Anteso from a little while ago. Tonaga was soil. So I got a phone call a little while ago from a person named Tersu. Someone named Tersu called a little while ago. Aka Tersuranin Saramanteso Tonaga was soil. 오늘은 인사라는 단어에 대해 배웠어요. 오늘은 인사라는 단어에 대해 배웠어요. 오늘, today, 인사. It's kind of a slang word that means it's short for insider, and it means someone who has lots of friends who's kind of popular. 인사라는 단어. The vocabulary word called 인사. 오늘은 인사라는 단어에 대해 배웠어요. 뜻 means meaning. 사랑이라는 뜻. So the meaning that is called love. Sounds a bit confusing, but let's look at the whole sentence. 그건, so that thing, that, whatever that is. 프랑스어로, so in French, 프랑스어로. En français, <laughs> sorry. 사랑이라는 뜻이에요. That means, or literally that is the meaning of, so that has the meaning of, love in French. 사랑이라는 뜻. So the meaning that is called 사랑. Again, this is why I wanted to teach you that it came from a quotation form. If you think about this form though, as only meaning called or titled or named or said, it's going to be confusing when you see it in certain usages like this. That's why I think it's good to keep in mind quotes, that tip I gave you. So in French, that means love. Isn't that a lot easier to understand than trying to have to translate it as called or named or titled or said? Because if you translate it like this, that is a meaning, or that is the meaning of called love. It doesn't really hold up so well when you're trying to understand something as a beginner. I think the quotes will really help you. So keep that in mind. But wait, there's more. As the late Billy Mays would say, there is another place you can see Iran unused that's extremely common. This doesn't seem any different than what we just did because kot means thing, kot is a noun. So it should be the exact same thing. A thing that is called a noun or be that is named or titled or maybe just a noun, kot, a noun thing, right? Literally, yes. And there are many cases when you can use this literally. Let me show you an example. Yuke ran in kot. So a thing that is called yuke. So a yuke thing. I'm not saying it's food here. I'm just saying it's a thing called yuke. So for my first time, chomuru mogo pasoyo. So I tried eating for my first time this thing called yuke. So I tried yuke for my first time. You can translate it just like that. That's not it though. We're not done with it. This sentence, kon. This is just kosen. Hengbo, happiness. Hengbo giran in gon. Sara mada. So each person, the standards are different for each person. So everyone's standards are different. But what is this part? How do we translate this? So this thing called happiness, when it comes to this thing called happiness, so everyone's standards are different when it comes to happiness. This should kind of make sense. Why do you think I don't just say 행복은 사람마다 기준이 달라요? I could say that, different nuance. And even though I'm using this form, I don't assume the listener doesn't know what I'm talking about, right? I mean, obviously there is no one in the world who wouldn't know what 행복 is. So why is there even a need to do this. Why? Even though literally it still makes sense, you can understand it. But why would you yourself want to produce this sentence? Think about that. There is another usage of iran and god that is used when you are trying to define something. Now wait, I already said that this iran and form is used, or one of the ways it's used, is to define or to describe or clarify something. But I said the reason you would want to do that is because you think the listener doesn't know about it, right? But it doesn't actually have to be that way. Because even though I can say, have you ever seen the drama called Squid Game before? Like, why would I do that? Well, the most logical reason is because I think the listener doesn't know what Squid Game is, right? But there's no requirement for that. Sit. 
The form in itself is simply acts as a way to add description to something by clarifying something to someone else. All it is is saying, hey, I'm going to be clarifying this thing for you right now. Why would you do that? Well, most of the time it's because you think the listener doesn't know. But with an abstract concept, it simply is, I'm just going to describe it. I'm going to clarify this abstract concept for you. I know you know it, but I'm going to clarify it for you anyway. This is what you use when you want to define something, either physically or conceptually. In this sentence, since hengbok is a concept, it's not an object, you can't go buy, you can't buy happiness. <laughs> so yeah, happiness, love, anything like that, use this form when you're going to describe them. Sounds a lot better. There's another usage for this. There's a completely separate translation for this form that I haven't even talked about. Unjeon, driving. Tom, first time. Tomida, so it is your first time. So Tom iranen gosen. So you can think of it in a couple ways. You can think of this as like so unjani tomieyo. It's my first time driving. So kojimari jo. It's a lie. It's your first time driving. You can think of it like that. You can also think of it like this. Remember, I said that this form is quoting. So literally. Let's look at it like this first. So saying that it's your first time driving. Saying that, right? It's a quote. It's a lie, right? So you saying it's your first time driving is a lie, right? There you go. Very good. But that's not a natural way to translate it. And there's a faster way you can translate this sort of stuff. The fact that is another way you can translate got. What does the fact that mean in English? Well, it means you're assuming that it's true, right? The fact. It's a fact. In this sense, though, it really means the fact that someone said it's their first time driving, but that doesn't really matter. It'll still fit as a nice translation here. So the fact that, or even just that, so it's a lie that it's your first time driving, right? It's a lie, the fact that you said it's your first time driving. But the fact that, or even just that, will work really well as a natural way to translate this form. So it's a lie that it's your first time driving, right? You're lying that it's your first time driving, right? You're lying that it's your first time driving. So how is this important? How is this useful then if we translate it as that? Do we really need this translation? Yes, you do. Let me show you why. When would you ever say the expression in English, the fact that? I hate the fact that you chose her over me. You're getting there. I don't like the fact that you always lie. Okay, I can't believe the fact that you're not coming. That's amazing. High five. I hate the fact that I can't learn Korean quicker. Okay, awesome. There's something else you have to know. What is this? One more time. It's this, right? What is this? This is the statement quoting form. But then what is this part? Ida. What if we change it not from to be, not from the fact that someone is, but the fact that someone does? You would have to change this verb, and that means you would get something different than this, right? You wouldn't get ira. Let's just take the example of hada. Well, what would hada be with this quoting form? Handago, right? So you could also get handa nun. I'm not going into this form for this lesson today because that would be a whole long list of more examples we'd have to cover. But it's the same thing. You can use other verbs with this form. Doesn't have to be ida. What if you wanted to say, not the fact that you are, but the fact that you did something. Hetta, hetta nen god. You can use this with any verb you want. Now we're not gonna be going into that for this lesson again. Just kind of want to open your mind and show you the possibilities. One common situation when you would use iran and god to mean the fact that is with the verbs alda to know or murada. But it could also be any other verb. For example, do you know the fact that or I don't know the fact that. 그게 잘못이란 걸. So 잘못 is an error, a mistake. 잘못이란 걸. So 것을 왜 모를까? How could they not know the fact that it's a mistake. Or how could they not know that's a mistake? You don't have to translate the fact that, but just know that it's kind of there. So, 잘못이란 걸 왜 모를까? 그게 잘못이란 걸 왜 모를까? Like, how could they not know that was a mistake? How could they? 저 배우의 나이가 50이라는 게 믿어져요? 배우 is actor or actress. 나이, age, 50, 50. 이라는 게, 게 is 것이. So is the fact that that actor's age is 50, 믿어져요? Is it believable? Do you really believe? Can you believe that actor's age is 50? Can you believe that actor is 50 years old? 저 배우의 나이가 50이라는 게 믿어져요? 
Okay, that is the lesson for today. Thanks for coming and 그럼 다음에 또 봐.